Mind Gap Podcast. Everybody. Welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin, and Doug is someone who doesn't drink or smoke. What do you do when you're feeling really low? I fucking eat. So I you go eat. to you go to food. And I eat. I go to town on all sorts of food. Like if I'm feeling like it's been a bad day, I'm like, where yeah. are the treats? Because I'm gonna house some treats. So what I now eat that, my feelings. Now that you are on more of the health kick though, like old Doug, we're talking like four years ago, Doug. Would have been a very, I'm assuming, would be a very different uh, eating your feelings than today, Doug is. I think there's similarities. The only difference is that I don't eat like that all the time. Okay. Like I used to. I used to. I'm like, I think (sighs) Nelly's going to love this for me in a few years. But Nelly got diarrhea for the first time. And Wait, wait. uh, For the first time? Yeah, man. She made it eight eight years. Wow. That's got to be some sort of a record. Yeah, man. That's impressive. And I go, hey. Dad used to have this like multiple times a week. So, and you know why? I go, because I ate like garbage. Mm-hmm. I go, whatever. Nowadays, when I get that, I'm like, what did I eat? Right. Because I need to change. You can go back and track it now. Yeah. Yeah. Before, I was like, I don't know, man. This is just life. This could, is what people do. Could have been anything. You know? I don't know, guys. <laughs> there was a great Tom Segura bit he does on his special uh, uh, Completely <clears throat> Normal, um, where he talks about how he didn't realize that uh, having diarrhea every day was bad. Like out of the ordinary until he moved in with his wife. And like after he did that and flushed the toilet, she was at the door with her keys. And she's like, he's like, what are you doing? She's like, do we need to go to the hospital? He's like, why? She's like, for what you just did in there. He's like, what? I just shit. She's like, no, that's not normal. He goes, what are you talking about? She's like, I don't have diarrhea. He goes, really? Like he just was eating just awful stuff all the time. His body's like, get it out. Basically just. Yeah. She's like, what can we say? (laughs) <laughs> she, I think she said something along the lines like, do you do that all the time? He goes, I don't know. Sometimes. He goes, I don't look at it. I just paint the bowl and I flush, you know? like. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. You, so I was you like. You don't know better. You, know, you don't know better. Yeah. And uh, I realized when I think back to all the stuff I used to eat just on the regular basis and also just not move. Oh, God. I'm like. Yeah. How am I not dead? You know what I mean? Just, just. 10 years, yeah. 10 plus years, more than 10 years. Who am I kidding? It's probably closer to 15 years. I was going to say, yeah. Eating like a monster, you know? Yeah. Well, like, again, oof. you're just looking at yourself, not to de- derail from the question at hand uh, too far, but like looking at yourself from that very first uh, thumbnail that we had, uh, not hard mm. to find a dick on a dog. Yeah. And then looking at yourself now, you're just like, yeah. what a journey we've come through. Like this is, you've walked a path, my friend. Yeah, I'm sure it was a lot of fun to watch me eat in social settings and at work as I would just like grab a whole bunch of nightmare food and just like cram it down my gullet. Here's the thing. You, the best part about that was the fact that I'm like, I got a partner in crime on this. Like I, I can justify what I'm doing because Doug says it's okay. Like Doug's doing it too. So we're just going to be like, we're going to fuel each other here. At least I'm not as bad as that guy, no, you know. No, like, <laughs> no, not at all. Like I can, I can match that guy. This is great because I don't have to feel like yeah. the, I don't have to feel like the one who's just disgusting. We can the guy be, who brings in we can a be whole disgusting box together. Of oatmeal cream pies, yeah. You know, he's just like eating oatmeal cream pies, drinking Coke Zero. Oh, God bless me with Coke, Coke Zero. Zeros. Yeah. You know, at least they were zero sugar. You know, like absolutely. You know, and absolutely, uh, yeah, and, yeah. Well, no, so, like the last uh, so, yeah. Hag just came up. Uh, a couple of weeks ago and he, I asked him, I said, is there any snacks or anything that you're, that you're, you know, they're looking for, I can go out and grab something. He goes, I'll defer to you with snacks. He goes, he goes, let me put it this way. If you're looking to be good, I'll be good with you. If you're looking for an excuse, I can be your excuse. <laughs> I, I could hear that in his voice. Yeah. I could hear him exactly saying that in his intonation and yep. in his, his rhythm. And he goes, meter. and he goes, that being said, French onion dip. And I go, done, <laughs> done. There you go. Done and done. And there it was, go. and it was like, lovely. Yeah. yeah. But so you, you know, go like to here, food. I go to food. Yeah. I yeah. easily, I go to food and, um, I go to sedentary stuff like, uh, playing video games, 
or watching a comfort show or movie. Okay. That's kind of like what I go to when I get really low. I'm like, I'm going to, yeah, play games. Is t- if I don't, if I'm not in the mood to play games, that's when it's a really bad day. That's like dark times. Yeah. Where I'm like, I don't even feel. That happened to me recently. I got really depressed, and I was like, I don't even feel like I don't even feel like playing games. I was like, oh shit. So what do you do at that? The, the low of like, I slept. you just so you just go to hibernate. I was like, I'm gonna go lay down. That's it. And I'm yeah. like. That's a, I know, I was like, I know that's a telltale sign of depression when you're just like, I just want to sleep. Right. And I'm like, Nothing, none of my interests interest me. I'm like, oh boy. Yeah. That's not good. Um, yeah. So, how about you, Justin? You don't drink or smoke. What do you do? False.com. Well, two truths and a lie. You would have failed, my friend. Uh, right. Do not smoke anymore, uh, but I do do drink. So I can uh, I'll I'll definitely go to a drink if uh, if I'm having a a low day or if I'm super frustrated about something. Um, but I have found that I I eat my feelings too. Like that's if uh, if I know I have something going on. Like if I've got the podcast or I've got something and I can't I want to be sharp. You know, then I'll I'll definitely. I'm no stranger to overeating, you know, and, and yeah. to a point where it's almost punishing where I'm just like, I feel horrible now, which again, psychologically speaking, then you get down in yourself where you're like, Oh, great. I did that to myself. I wonder how long that's going to take to work off that, that bag of chips, you know? So mm-hmm. it is, it's a, it's a weird cycle when you get into it, but I, uh, yeah, yeah I, 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 I'll go between booze and booze and food are my kind of my two things. Yeah. I've gotten better now, at least like I give myself some treats and things like that. And it's and I'm like, I don't worry about it because I'm like, it's fine. Yeah. You know, and also I posted something in our discord, which you should check out link in the description um, about there's, you know, obviously if anyone's familiar with the BMI at the body mass index, it's a crock of shit. I saw it's you like, posting something about this. Yeah. Yeah. It's an absolute. The BMI stuff is just so like to call it a crude study of health is an understatement. Okay. Um, it was designed by people, I think in the late 1800s who just start studied white men, white European men. Oh, got it. And they based all of their <laughs> stuff off of that. It was kind of based in eugenics, which is not a good thing. Right. Um, so if anyone's like, Ooh, my BMI says I'm obese. They've, they've tested athletes who are obese and they've tested people who are obese who are like, no, you're doing good. Like they just, it doesn't measure your body that well and there's they're working on new tests to find a way to essentially uh, do a better scan of your body and that they're getting there it's not super accessible at the moment but i'm like thank god but um i bring all that up um for a reason i can't remember i don't remember why i went on this path um <laughs> was it was it but, i said uh, when i said how long does it take to how long is that going to take to work off the bag of chips yeah was i think that- I, oh that's what i said i was like you know i i i treat myself to some things because i'm like genetically I'm not going to be Chris Hemsworth. That's right. just, you know, a lot of the stuff is genetic. It's just how you right. are built. Right. It's just how it's going to be. And I remember reading in a, a, a bodybuilding book years ago. My dad bought it for him. It was Arnold Schwarzenegger. It talked about different body types. It's like, okay. And literally back then he was like, based on your body type, there's just certain things you're going to be able to do. And that's totally fine. It's totally cool. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Okay. Yeah. So that's like, I think early on, at one point in a relationship, I go, ah, this is just the way that I'm built. And you were like, no, no. I think you, I think you read it as like, Doug's being a defeatist, you know, like yeah, well, someone think, in their, in yes. their middle age being like, oh, it's just my old age is kicking in. You know, you and I talked about that. That drives like, me no, nuts. Yeah. D- yeah. Ah, fuck you. You can do something about that. You yeah. know? And I think you're like, no, I don't think, you know, I'm like, well, genetics has a lot to play with it. I think that was the thing I didn't really, uh, uh, enunciate that well was just basically like yeah it's 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 what's in your genes right well, <laughs> for I think a lot of the stuff the, for a lot of it right and I think there there are you know with having a more nuanced conversation surrounding that I do think that yes. like I I'm sure the way that I heard it in my ear was you going like why even try I'm just this the way I am you know and <laughs> as I'm eating oatmeal cream pie I'm like you know it's just it's just I'm built this way it's <laughs> this like ah uh, built by oatmeal cream pies because. Maybe. Right. There's a, there's a solid foundation of uh, digested oatmeal cream pies that are that are yeah. laying a very creamy brickwork for this. No, I... Uh, yeah. But yeah. If you eat three of those as low as a quad burger and cheese fries and a milkshake, yeah, you're going to have uh, you're going to have a really bad... You're going to have a really bad time, Doug. You're going to have a really bad time. That's what it is. Yeah, that's where it comes from. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but like there are... There, there is a limit to, I think, I think that's what, yeah, there's a limit to what you can probably achieve without going 
in without hiring a personal trainer and hiring yeah. a chef and hi, like just in your daily life, there's a, there's genetics takes you or, or, or caps you at a certain point. Uh, but mm. there's definitely always things that you can that you can do to continue to better yourself. And I think that's what yeah. you, you fell right into that pocket where you're just like, I'm going to do what I can and everything else be damned. I'm just going to do what I can do and put my put myself on a very healthy course, you know. Yeah. Work within the yeah, parameters that's, that's, of what my genetics is giving me, basically. Right. And that's the only thing I'm like, because listen, right. I'm not going to eat perfect. I never am. Hmm. And that's fine. Like there's I also I've subscribe been, to that. It There's look, you're live like there's. Sometimes I want French onion dip. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not I'm not being paid twenty million dollars to start an action flick. So guess what? Yeah. I'm getting French onion dip. But I don't eat right. it all every day. Yeah. So like for example, I made some lemon glaze cookies on Sunday. There you got some delicious. And fucking amazing. Yes. But you know what I've done? I've had one every day. Nice. I've had one after dinner. Yeah. Which is my little treat. And I'm like, there you go, buddy. Right. Old Doug would th- those would not have survived past Sunday. Like <laughs> nom, 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 nom. they would have been long gone. Right. And trust me, I want to eat more than one because they're so fucking good. Right. And I'm like, <sighs> I have a real sweet tooth and I just go to town on that stuff. But I'm like, let's let's take a breath and let's just have one. Let's enjoy it. Let's move on. Right. Let's get out of the kitchen and let's go on from there. So like I look at that stuff as victory. So absolutely. Um, you know, I'm never going to be shredded. I don't want to be shredded. I just want to be healthy. I want to be able to move around, be mobile, be flexible, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's that. That's that with a baseball bat. That's that with a baseball bat. So tell us, what are your vices? What do you do? Do you smoke? Do you drink? Do you eat your feelings? Do you watch TV? Do you sleep? What do you do? What are you feeling low? We want to hear By it. you, I'm assuming you mean listeners and viewers because I'm like, we've just covered this. I don't do that. Yes. <laughs> I meant the listeners and viewers. I was talking directly into camera this time and saying, you, the royal you, tell us what you what you do. Um, yeah. Tell I, us what you're doing right tell now. Tell us what you're doing right now. What are you doing what while you, you listen doing? to this? Are you low? What are you doing? Yeah. Huh? Are you low? You Let doing? us pick you up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Let us let us justify whatever you're doing right now. We can do that. Yeah. I was we very are the good. king. When I was smoking, we are the emperors of enabling. Yes, that's what we are. When I was smoking cigarettes, uh, I was able to justify. Like it, it was never a good time to quit because if it was having a good day, I'm going to celebrate with a cigarette. If I was having a bad day, <laughs> ah, I need a cigarette. If I you know, if I was having a yeah. Wednesday, ah, it's a cigarette. Like. Like yeah. it was so yeah justifying it, when you're in one of those if you've got a vice justifying can be super easy so uh yeah. we will help you you know what let's do this you let us know what your vice is and we will help you figure out how to unjustify that vice that's our yes we'll, we are, we'll work we are we'll, we'll do our best credentialed and qualified to help you with this <laughs> i look i'm just saying we're gonna try <laughs> we're gonna do our best we're here for you we're the gonna- royal you yeah. And if you want to let us know, check the link in the description for a link to our Discord. Join us there. Pop it in the podcast discussion channel and uh, post in there your thoughts and feelings and we'll do our best. Or just if you have a problem, eh, check out the Ask Practical Doug channel too or any of the other channels. You're welcome to be there. And uh, also check the links uh, for uh, links to our merch at Redbubble, links to our Patreon. And if you're watching us on the YouTubes at youtube.com slash podcast, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button and do us a favor. Uh, leave a comment and uh, share us around. Share us with somebody that uh, you know you think would enjoy this, and we'd love to welcome them into our mists. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Welcome it into our mists or our midst. What do you think I said? Well, I want to go Choose with mists. Okay, I like welcome the idea that mists. we just emit a mist while people are listening, and we welcome yes, them into the it. The mists of Barovia. <laughs> Hey you, are you feeling bugged out by your lack of passion in the bedroom? (laughs) Been there. Well, we've got something that'll have you chirping with delight. Introducing Cicada Lust Dust, the all-organic libido enhancer made from nature's noisy nymphos. Our researchers have spent years in the lab carefully extracting the hormones that drive these red-eyed ramrods to get it on. Once extracted, We turn it into a fine powder and cut it with low-grade cocaine, which has been scientifically proven to be the fastest way to get it into your system. With just a small snort 
of Cicada Lust Dust, you'll be going at it like it's a 17-year reunion. And because it's all natural, you don't have to worry about any negative long-term effects, except potentially a parasitic fungus that slowly overtakes the majority of your body and will eventually cause your genitals to fall off. But hey, that's just a maybe. Are you seriously willing to forego mind-bending lovemaking just to make, just because you might lose your dick? We didn't think so. So ditch the excuses and get ready to make some noise. Head to cicadalust.com and use promo code MINDGAP at checkout for 17% off your first order. Cicada Lust Dust, fuck like a bug. Yeah, baby. Mm. Yeah, baby. Cicadas are on the brain. By the way, I know we've done cicadas three weeks in a row yeah, now. Let's, I just want to add a, add a little update. Please. Jill was like looking at like NBC News and there was like a map of like where the cicadas are in the U.S. Okay. And they're like, you know, you got some over here and they got, you'll see a very strong concentration right here around Downers Grove. Like they called out specifically my suburb yeah. of like, this is where it's really bad. And I'm like, wonderful, wonderful. You're not kidding. Yeah. You're not kidding. Well, it is wild. My mom who lives in Schaumburg, I was talking to her. She's like, do you have any cicadas? And I said, no, we don't have any here in Grand Rapids. And she goes, we have nothing here. And I'm like, you're kidding yeah. me. In Sha- I said I can confirm that I was in Schaumburg on Friday. That's not right, a goddamn, were. not a goddamn. Uh, something flew by and I put up my Dukes and it was a butterfly. And I was like, Dukes "Oh, throwing bows, awfully quiet out here." Yeah, you know. When I told her, I said, "I, I said, Doug, who's not that far from you in Downers Grove." I said, "It like it looked like a uh, fucking mulch on the ground when he sent me a picture." And our cousins, uh, or my cousin in Elmhurst, uh, she was over there. Uh, family thing, whatever. Uh, she was like, yeah, we, we were taking the kids for a walk. You could, you could have shoveled them off the ground. And so it, it mm-hmm. makes no sense how they're in these pockets around the suburbs. I just don't get it. I don't get it's it. It's wild, man. I got to tell you, dude, fucking I got to tell you, listen, it's fucking loud. It is so good. Has it gotten loud. worse? Louder. In front of my house, we have two trees. Yeah. It is excruciatingly loud. Can you Between hear like right now? two and five. Yeah. Really? No I can't. Shit. I can't. I, I, part of me was afraid they'd pick up on the mic. I'm but, not hearing uh, shit. So, yeah. Good. Because they are fucking loud, man. It is. And any audio recording I do doesn't do it justice. Oh, you yeah. walk out, you're like, fuck me. Yeah. God damn it. Like, it's loud. But anyway, enough of cicadas. I had a quick question for you Tell before me. we get in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to some of our stuff. Had a conversation with a dear friend of mine mm-hmm. who was talking about someone they followed, someone they liked that they followed on Instagram, who was complaining about the fact that people will like follow them being like this, you know, influencer, I guess we can just call them that, but they get upset that the people who join and follow them don't engage with the content. They don't. Interesting. They don't like posts. Sure. They don't comment. They don't. And, and they got really upset about that. And it got me thinking about, you know, the whole, cause I've seen this too, like a really shitty post on LinkedIn. That's like, are you even really a good follower? Right. If you don't engage yeah. with my content, it's like, all right. I think we had one of those Fucking posts rocks. on the the game we played. Probably. Yeah. And I think that I think I said, yeah, that's totally a person 100%. because they are so butthurt that no one is engaging with their content. Right. And as people who create stuff for people to enjoy, yeah, um, yeah I can say it does kind of suck mm-hmm. when. You make all this stuff and nobody gives a shit. Right. But also, I make this because I want to. Mm-hmm. And I make this because um, I don't, I've always told anybody, someone goes, hey, dude, I'm so sorry. I don't listen to your podcast. I go, where is it written you have to? Right. My friends, like, you know, my some, my, my, my brother sometimes is like, ah, oh, man, I'm sorry. I don't listen. I'm like, I don't, <clears throat> you don't, you're not required to because you know me. Right. If you don't like my stuff, that's fine. Like, you don't have to listen to my things, yeah. you know? And uh, it got me just thinking about how now, especially nowadays in the climate of social media and content creation and things like that, it's like the engagement obviously is huge. Engagement is what drives most of the algorithms on these things. Right. But the idea to be furious at people for not yeah. engaging with your content, like what do you think about that? I'm Look, I, I, I agree. I'm, it bums me out when we can see the amount of times a thing's been viewed, but then we see the engagement level is nothing. I'm like... I have to assume, and this is just assumptions, but I have to assume based on my habits, I don't, I'll, I'll see things that I really enjoy, but I, for whatever reason, just 
don't think to click the like button. I won't hit the heart, Yeah. but I do enjoy it and I'll follow the account in this and this. So I have to assume that all those views that we're seeing come in on our different platforms just because there's no engagement does not mean that it's not landing well. Like I feel like I'm like, it. Yeah. for me, that's a comfort. I'm like, look, does it suck that we're not getting likes and actually able to see that people are like, hey, good things and commenting? I would love more of that. It does suck. But I I know just based off of my own uh, use of the platform, I think I take comfort in the fact that I'm like, I'm pretty sure people are enjoying this because of the number of followers, the number of views, yada, yada. I don't need to see it. Would I like to? Yes. I think to get furious over it or to get like irate and call out your subscribers or what, like that's... You're, you're having a, you're looking far, far too, too much outside yourself for validation. Like you're about to house a whole sleeve of Oreos. That's exactly what's about to happen. You know, you're going to, you're going to get some French onion dip and you're going to go to town on it. With, yeah. That's what you're feeling. Right you're now. dipping those Oreos in the French onion dip. Goddamn right. Um, yeah. Like, uh, you know, we had someone uh, after last week's episode, they posted in the discord and they're like, Hey, I heard Doug said he tried Thai food for the first time. So here's a recipe that I made. That's that awesome. You got. And I was like, awesome. Right. They listened to the episode. How cool, you know? Yeah. And, you know, and I get all sorts of comments on our videos about how I look like the sloth from ice age. <laughs> Just, I gotta say, listen, <laughs> I was so confused the first time it happened, and I'm still confused. I don't, like, I don't I kinda truly get, don't get it. it. I kind of do as I look at myself and my camera right now. Like, yeah, I kind of get it. But also, I'm like, guys, like, I mean, my eyes aren't on the side of my like head or anything like no. that. We had one of the recent when they're like, dude, is this the guy? Is this the <laughs> is this Sid from Ice Age with the wrong amount of chromosomes? And I was just like, <laughs> man. It, it, you guys, and I just wrote, I just wrote, since my dad. <laughs> See, that again, you are so masterful in the way that you approach that kind of engagement because I would not be able, I would either get into fights with these knuckleheads or I would, I, I don't yeah. know, I it just, it would not come off the same way. You are, for Mind Gap, you are whoever runs Wendy's social media. You are the equivalent of that person in my mind. I love it. I just, I don't know, man. I, I think it's wild to me. First of all, it's almost like there's some wild inside, like weird, like minority of like inside joke. It's like, let's keep posting that he looks like Sid from Ice Age and it just right. keeps happening. And well, I'm the like, fact, yeah, the it's kind of funny it, at this point. You know? That more than one person has posted it. It is almost like, it's like a, it's, it's like a, a dark web conspiracy theory or some shit. Yeah. A bunch of randos who are just like, man, th- does it just mean it look like the sloth from Ice Age? <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? It makes no sense. <laughs> Moving forward, whenever he goes, like, if you do some dumb icebreaker at work, they're like, what celebrity do you look like? I'm going to be like, Sid from Ice Age. And I can prove it. Look at all these comments I can, that say yeah. that I do. Independently you know? verified. Independently confirmed and verified. Everyone agrees about this. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. And honestly, like, it's, and, and, and if it, if we were to blow up, like part of it would be like, all right, that's cool. But there's that other side of it too, where spotlight, oh, it burns, it is, it, you know, and the amount of people that would come through and inevitably, I mean, me posting a clip about how to push a, a shopping cart, got someone calling, ooh, calling me ableist. Ooh, they were, you know, I was they like, were mad at that clip. I was ooh, like, they they're going to dig through these episodes. They're going to find something yep. and they're going to be like, look at these assholes. I'm going to be like, I don't know, man. That was like, what? How many years ago? We've said you a know? lot of like, shit in 447 episodes over eight yeah. plus years, like coming up on nine. Like we've said a lot of yeah. shit. We said a lot of things, man. And listen, I would love to go back. That's like sometimes we're like when Hague goes, hey, man, I got a beef about you with you about this one episode. I'm like, you're going to have to read it back to me. Yep. And I may agree with you at this yeah. point. I don't know when it was. My I don't know what I was saying. May I don't have know changed. what my mood was. Yeah. So I'm totally cool. Let's talk about it because I have no fucking clue. Because right. I can tell you what, I know I've changed a lot. So right. it's totally cool. Yeah. But anyway, I don't know. I find it. What do you, you know? I'm curious what everyone else thinks about that too. Like in the world of constant content, yeah, and content generation, the idea of like this need to you know, obviously have the engagement and stuff, but I'll also pass it over to you, to you all as well. It's like, do you really want that? Because I liken it to someone being like, man, I want to be play lead guitar on a stage in an arena. I'm like, all right, are you prepared to do what it takes to get there? Right. You know, cause you see the end result, mm-hmm. you know, I was like, man, it'd be cool to be playing in an arena. I'm like, you have to 
be good at your instrument. <laughs> you have to find a group of people that are also good at their instruments that are dedicated. You have no money. Right. You have to get good as a group. You have to write songs, good songs. You have to tour your ass off. You have to be comfortable in front of people. A very you have to large number of people. Constantly constantly market there's all this stuff you have the people just see the end result they're like i want to do that right. they see mr beast and they're like i want to be that guy i'm like that guy works his balls off right that guy's life sounds like a living hell right. to me like right yeah is he the number one subscribe to channel on youtube Sh- you bet your ass sure, yeah but that guy spends how many millions of dollars per episode the production that goes into it like he's running a business it's not easy i'm not gonna lie people i've never like, seen one mr beast episode i haven't either. I, like i Nor know people I. fucking love him and he's this huge yeah. youtuber i he for some reason i think it, it demographics it just it missed that cross section of where i was watching and where yeah. he came up so i feel like i need to go familiarize myself now but i don't maybe it's too late maybe you gotta you gotta deal with amazon to do a game show jesus christ so, all right well fucking yeah hey, man. so like i hear this stuff tang- tangentially through news, Sorry, and, yeah, yeah, sure, news sure. and stuff like that so i, I haven't watched it but like again if that's what you really want to do, you know, I had similar thoughts when I was younger too, where I'm like, man, I really want to do this really thing that looks really, really cool. And it's like, it is cool at that massive level. Right. But to get there ain't easy. And you got to be prepared to do what you need to do. And it's like the people that just stream on Twitch every single day and they just have shitty setup. They don't engage with anybody. They just play chess yep. every single day. And then they're like, Man, fuck this. I do this every day. I put in the time. I put in the effort. It's like, dude, you're you're not doing it. No. You are doing the bare minimum. Right. You're streaming every single day, but you're not creating clips. You're not sending them out. Yeah. You're not engaging with the community. You're not engaging with viewers who come on. You know, you like there's Look, all this sort I, of stuff where people Yeah. You and I know, you know, it just as well as anyone what goes into it. Like the fact mm-hmm. that you were like, we can call ourselves out. Like, should we be here's yeah. all the things that we should be doing, but We've got families, we've got, you know, nine to five jobs, we've got other interests and hobbies, we've got this and that and the other. Like, this occupies only so much time, and it can occupy yeah. only so much time. Could we be doing a lot more? Of course. But is it is the juice worth the squeeze? I don't know. Like, that's a, you got to dedicate your whole fucking life to nothing, Listen, nothing man, but I, that. I, I only have a small amount of patience for doing anything on social media. Right. And... I don't have time to just constantly. That's why there's a full time job for social media managers out there where they go out there and they're working with community. I'm like, I don't have the interest or the desire to wade into the comments of social media and do stuff. If you guys post stuff to us, comments, I'll always respond. Like, we'll always respond. I'll always do that. And also, it. We fucking love it. Like it. It look nothing. Nothing gets you higher than like, oh, cool. Someone actually engaging. Like, let me be clear. I will always engage with our stuff. Yes. It's hard for me to go out and like consistently engage with other people's content. For six like months, I, we tried that when Slotty was, yeah. was working with us and we, we, yeah. we were like, all right, we're going to get on this. And we, and look, we did see an increase in subscribers mm-hmm. in re-engagement with our stuff. Like there, mm-hmm. we saw the benefits of that. Like it's very real and it's, it's not, it's not bullshit. Like if you dedicate yourself to that, you will see a, a return, yeah. but it's a slow grow. Because it like is. the return that we were seeing, it was there, but it was nominal. And mm-hmm. over time, that will compound and it'll get bigger and bigger. But you've got to yeah. be willing to go the distance with that. Yeah, for sure. So all that being said, I think what's really important in this day and age is concrete decisions and evidence. And as of now, actually, I should say as of May 17th, 2024, we officially now know that tacos and burritos are technically sandwiches. And according to U.S. law, Mm -hmm. it's official. It's official. And of course, I'll say this. Nowhere but Indiana would this... (laughs) Nowhere but Indiana. I told Beth, she goes, what what are you talking about the podcast tonight? I said this, and she goes, what judge? I go, it was in Indiana. She goes, that tracks. (laughs) Well, it's funny because... herself. So the headline for this article on AP News was Indiana judge opens door for new eatery finding tacos and burritos are Mexican style sandwiches. And the background on this was there was a um, there is a a strip mall that uh, it's a uh, Quintana said the nearby Covington Creek Association uh 
let me let me find a better spot for this. Uh, so basically, there was a um, a strip mall that the people who owned it wanted to limit what restaurants could exist there. <clears throat> they didn't want fast food. They wanted something that was made to order. So they're like something like a subway so- shop or a subway would be allowed there because it's made to order stuff that's like fresh and things like that. And this uh, restaurant, the famous Taco, um, wanted to open up shop there and they're like "Mm, no that's not really like a sandwich like place right and the owners of the famous taco were like we disagree and they sued them they took it to court and ultimately an indiana judge ruled that yes tacos and burritos are in fact mexican style sandwiches and justin how you dealing with all this man it will look the gut reaction, I heard it, and I'm like, ah, false. It's not. It's a taco. And then I went, wait, wait. Put your preconceived, put the 40 years of what you were told a sandwich was aside and look at this a little bit more broadly. Because there's ever, like, the old internet game is the debate, what is a sandwich, right? Like, people have, yes. this, you know, in the, cor- in the nerd corners of the internet, this is what's been, and you can look up different, sandwich matrixes and we pulled up the sandwich alignment chart here and I was looking through it and I was the structural neutral ingredient purist. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, yeah, a sub I consider a sandwich, which leads me to the next sell over the true neutral. I'm like, if a sub's a sandwich, a hot dog is the same concept for a vehicle with meat in Mm -hmm. between so maybe I do think a hot dog's a sandwich. And then that led me down. Well, does it have to be bread or does it have to be any sort of, uh, you know, a grain based thing that closes around something on both sides. And so I think I'm coming around to the fact that a taco might be a form of a sandwich. Like I never thought I'd hear myself say it, but I think I might be getting there, Doug. Yeah. Uh, proud to Doug, obviously weighed in on this. Um, that you have to look outside, you know, what you know and grew up with, you know, right. like obviously we look at a sandwich as two pieces of bread with something in between them, right. you know, like that's a sandwich. Like if you and look at like the hardline at- traditionalist, like if you just, mm-hmm. if I said picture a sandwich, you know, if you're watching yeah. this on YouTube, if you're listening to this, go Google sandwich alignment chart or go watch us on YouTube. But the hardline traditionalist, that is what I picture. If you tell me to picture a sandwich, that's what my mind conjures right. up immediately. It says a BLT is a sandwich. Right. It's like, correct. I love how they have this set up. There's like the structure side and the ingredient side. Right. And this is basically like, you know, an alignment chart with d and right. It being that the hardline traditionalists are lawful good. Yep. And that that's what a traditional sandwich is. And then as you go to like chaotic good, which is structural purist, but ingredient rebel, you've got ice cream between waffles is a sandwich. You know, right. it's like structurally, it, yeah, hits, it hits the it checks the boxes because who said it has to be bread? It could be because an ice cream sandwich, right, is technically right. Cookies <clears throat> with ice cream in between them, you know, like it, it can work. Like and if, then I love thing if you were to take uh, two waffles and put the BLT stuff in between <clears throat> that, because like, I know people will focus hyper focus yeah. on that ice cream. And I'm like, OK, let's start with the waffle. Like, if you put the BLT stuff in between a waffle, would you consider that a sandwich? If yes, then okay, we're halfway there. Right. And then you go to, like, structure, you know, structure neutral. And you've got, like, the sub is a sandwich, sure. you got your hot dog. And then, like, an ice cream taco is a sandwich. It's like, oh, boy. Right. Oh, boy. crazy over here. Now, the only one that I really debate on this one is radical sandwich anarchy. A Pop-Tart is a sandwich. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Bottom right corner, the the evil, yeah. uh, the the chaotic, the chaotic evil, evil version yep. is pop tart is a sandwich. Where I'm like, I don't think so. I don't think I so. Disagree. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I could totally see that. Um, it's that uh, uh, a hard shell taco and a burrito are sandwiches for sure. Absolutely. If you're looking I, at I things no from more of like what is that genie like with like you've got the family and then you've got the subspecies and the, this and like mm-hmm. I could see sandwich being if you say sap. Oh, I did the thing again with the. With the, I didn't see yeah, it. Yeah, good. So okay. It's all good. Um, <laughs> if you do a sandwich at the top and say like sandwich is a, is a catch-all for this and this and this, then I would say that eight out of these nine 
sells, I'm inclined to agree with. Mm -hmm. I, here's the thing. I Just, will say I struggle with the ingredient rubble column. Yeah. Like I'm six of the nine cells comfortably. <laughs> I can, I can get on board with. I, the radical, the pop tart. I don't know. Ice cream taco. Ugh. The ice if you cream. You can between accept a hard waffles. shell taco. If you can accept a hard shell taco, then you have to accept if I, the ice cream taco. If I can accept a hard shell taco, and if I can accept the ice cream between waffles, mm -hmm. that's essentially that's mar that's a marriage of the two things. So I gotta right. And who's to say a sandwich has to be, you know, like a Monte Cristo sandwich? There's sweet in mm. that as well with the powdered right. sugar and the jam. Yeah. Like I, I'm just saying. There's the KFC double down where Whoa. the buns are chicken. Jesus you know, Christ. America. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would probably be uh, ingredient rebel, I would assume. I, <laughs> in that one, that would be. Well, oh, man, I don't know what would Maybe that be. Ingredient structural? neutral. Wait, what's in between it again? Is it bacon? <laughs> what is in between right, the got, chicken? What What is a? Because I'm not KFC. gonna lie, there was a point in my life where I really wanted to try it, and now I heard it, and I was like, "Dear God, right. okay." So, what do we got in the KFC double down? Oh, AI overview. Please tell me what this is. It's a bunless sandwich made with two fried chicken fillets, cheese, bacon, and sauce between the fillets. There you go. Got to have the sauce. You can't let it be dry. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, this has to be ingredient rebel, I would assume. I would think Because structurally, it's there. Ingredient neutral, though, right? Because bacon, yeah. bacon, cheese, and sauce, if you just put that between bread, that would be, i consider that a yeah. sandwich. No, I agree. Ingredient neutral, probably... Um, well, structure because it's definitely a structure purist because it's got yeah you know it's got two um, but yeah I don't know it feels it feels more ingredient rebel to me Does because it? because while because of your you're not having you know because if you look at these two that we have here it's like a, a chip buddy which I don't even know what a chip buddy is oh, it looks like chip buddy. it looks like ketchup and French fries yeah it looks awful uh, I'd try it a chip barm or chip bun is a sandwich filled with chips. All right, there you go. Yeah. So basically, it's British it's, you got chips. Two it's fries. Piece of bread with fries yeah. in it. So because this lacks the bread, instead you have the chicken. It's similar to me, like you know, this ice cream between waffles is a sandwich because like the waffles oh, are your traditional. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. okay. So I put the cake double down as ingredient rebel, but structure pure. I could see that. Everything oh. else about that makes sense. Yep. In that sort of regard, but if the double down is a goddamn sandwich, you know what I mean? Like if we're gonna say <laughs> yes, this isn't sandwich. Yeah. Then I was like, of course a burrito is. Oh, it's yeah. just wrapped differently. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Like the it's the the delivery system, it still delivers everything in a nice tight package. Right? You're yeah. still getting a little bit of everything when you bite through it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say it 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 meets. I don't know. I, I again, this we put this on here and I thought I knew where I stood, but the more I thought about it, I'm like, fuck, man, I don't know. This is uh do you think the judge used the sandwich alignment chart in his decision making? How do you think the judge that. came to this decision? I hope the prosecutors provide this as an exhibit and said, you know, your honor, I'd like to present exhibit <laughs> D, the sandwich alignment chart. And you'll see here that according to this <laughs> burrito is structural and rebel, but ingredient neutral. I rest my case, you know, <laughs> <clears throat> for a second. Can we all agree <laughs> that hard shell tacos suck? Like, can we just get nachos instead? Because it's all just going to fall apart when you take a bite. Right, it becomes nachos. Hard shell tacos yeah. are just pre nachos. Hard shell ta hard shell tacos yeah. are for children. I look. I like. like I do like the crunch of a hard shell taco, but of course, after that first bite, all bets are off. You get one good bite, Structural. and then the rest of it, you're like you're working to keep it together. It's too much work. You know what you're doing. You're taking the rest of the uh, structurally damaged. Uh, container and mm -hmm. scooping it up like a nacho to fucking eat it. Absolutely. That's what you're yeah. doing at that point. Yeah. It is a fragile <clears throat> and inconsistent <laughs> vessel for the sandwich. And I don't see, because honestly, when was the last time you had a hard shell taco? I can't even remember. God, it's been a minute. I feel like we transitioned to soft shell tacos and that's the way that, which are, let's, can we also agree those are just little burritos? I mean, <laughs> They're like the, yeah, fajitas. I, I mean, just fold them over and you got a burrito, right? Like, does do you have right? to have that? Yeah. Granted, they are small enough that it's hard to do like the whole wrap and everything like that. I mean, but I mean, come on, like, 
They're fajitas. Right. They're, you know, whatever. It's like to be like, this is a soft shell taco. It's like, wow, we are dumb you're just, no, you're just, as Americans. It's, it's the size. It's like talking. It's like speaking fake Italian when you go to Starbucks, right? Like you're just like yeah. soft, soft shell taco is just saying a small burrito. That's all you're saying. It's just a different way of saying it. <laughs> it's so dumb, though. It's just like, can I get a soft shell taco? You mean like. I a just fajita? give me flour. I want a flour taco. I want yeah, flour Can shell. Can you bake the flour with some water? Can you maybe some cornmeal and then like flatten it down and then like now, cook it? Let me ask you this. Are you for soft shell? Are you corn or flour? I go either. I think I lean towards flour okay but i can eat either i think corn is definitely has its place it's a little more obviously uh tough yeah it's a tougher if i'm having it's built a, corn tough you know if i'm having an el pastor taco i love a corn because mm-hmm. it'll hold yes like it'll really it hold the juices and things like that bingo. yes if i'm doing chicken definitely or beef a good way to go i'll for typically that. like mm-hmm. a, a flour but yeah something yeah. about that the flavor too of the corn with the with that usually you get the el pastor and you get the uh Little pineapple in there. It's you gotta tasty. get yeah. There's definitely good combinations with that yeah. stuff. But yeah, I cannot remember the last time I've had a hard shell. God, taco I'm trying to remember. I feel like it was not like that. that buying level. them from the store, you're like Jesus Christ. You're holding it like you're trying to wheel uranium. <laughs> you know, don't drop. Don't the, jiggle this. Don't drop it. For you know the Manhattan Project, where you're like, oh my god, and right. it's like, oh fuck, three of these got broken. <laughs> Guess what we're having? Nachos. Nachos. You know, like. I think the last time, do? honestly, the last broken. time I think I had a hard shell taco was when I went to Taco Bell. So this has been years, but I was at Taco Bell and I got the uh, Dorito Loco taco. Jesus Christ. That was the last time I think I had a hard shell. Did you get a Baja Blast while you were there? I don't do the Baja Blast. No? I don't dig on that. But I'll wreck like 10 Dorito Loco tacos and a Crunchwrap yeah. Supreme. I should go to Taco That's Bell. That's the other thing too is like, listen, I like my thin crust pizza. Right? Yeah. I can have a lot more of it and feel good. But also, give me that fucking deep dish, man. Let me feel that like one piece is doing its job. Right. Same thing with this. Give me a fucking burrito, man. Fill it to the brim and let me go to town on this one burrito. (laughs) Don't be like, here's 10 tacos. I'm like, fuck you, man. Obviously, you're like, hey, I'm going to get a variety, right? I'm going to have shrimp. Sure. I'm going to have chicken. I'm going to have beef. I'm going to have pork. Cool. Go wild. Go crazy with it. But I'm like, Give me that big fat load ass me chorizo up. burrito, baby, and load me up. No veggies, just meat and cheese. I can't do chorizo. And either. oh, I love me some trees. I wish I liked it. I can't. I'm, I'm not a fan of the flavor. Oh my god, it's so good. I love it. Oh, it's dude, just the best. you would have loved that breakfast sandwich we had the other day. Then, yeah, uh, diarrhea all day long. What was on that sandwich, Justin? Uh, well, chorizo for sure. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't <laughs> have the rest of the ingredients on the top of my head, but I know it was chorizo. What egg cheese? <laughs> Egg, cheese, ger- chorizo. And there was a bun, so it was a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Confirmed. Confirmed. Breakfast sandwich. Bre- yeah, exactly. Uh, Breakfast Sammy. I don't know. Hey, what do you What do you think? And Doug, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the listeners and huh? viewers. Uh, you already talk- we already talked about this. We're starting over. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, no, I, I, I'd be curious. Like, where do you stand on this si- sandwich alignment chart, dear listeners and viewers? Because... This is, I have in the past in improv, in the, I've heard uh, this debate get heated. People draw lines in the sand. There are people who have very strong opinions. And I look, I'm not going to fault you for an opinion that I don't share. Uh, when it comes to something like this, I think this is a very debatable topic, even though now we have a hard rule of law to go against. It's true. Yeah. We can say in, in, in law school, we'll say it was, uh, uh, Quintana versus uh, Indiana <laughs> versus the board of strip malls uh, we'll, of education. We'll, we'll and cite sandwiches. that, yeah. Um, but again, I'd love I'd love to hear what are your thoughts on this? Like, like where where do you stand on the sandwich alignment chart? Are you a hardline traditionalist? Are you one of those fucking nutbag radical sandwich anarchists? Let us yeah, know. Yeah, I don't think we're ever going to see eye to eye if you're a radical sandwich <laughs> anarchist. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Change my mind. Change my mind. Pop tart is a sandwich. All right, before uh, we wrap up here, just a quick, fun little thing to talk about. Uh, this headline, yeah, should make you feel at ease. Most of 15 million bees contained after bee laden truck crashes. Operative word there, most. And also, like, man, there's a lot of powerful words in in that sentence in that headline. That's right. Most of 15 million bees. 15 bees. So first million question, bees. First of all, question is, <clears throat> what is most? 
for you when it comes to 15 million bees? Right. What are we talking? Are we talking 70%? Right. 80%? Did you get 14 million of the 15? Because guess what? There's still 1 million bees flying around. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of bees. Yeah. yeah. Let's uh, if let's let's see if we're yeah, like well if technically seventy percent is most you know what do you- uh, that means uh, you you got ten point five million of them so congrats you know used to, used to still that. missing the other four point five right? so yeah. and also bee laden truck <laughs> bee laden that's just like it's like is is this truck like infected with them you know it's i like, just imagine the bees are surrounding the outside of the truck you know right. as it's going down and you're just like well that's weird that truck's moving yeah so according to the article uh a tractor trailer hauling about 15 million honeybees to be used to pollinate blueberry fields crashed and overturned on interstate 95 uh and this was in uh maine so which interesting i think that's cool they're like we're gonna transport these bees sure to this place so they can pollinate stuff. Never in my life, as I've been driving down by a semi, have I thought, I bet there's bees in there. Right. I will now, you know? but what are the odds that there's bees in there? You know, I know I see them like, oh, there's food. I've seen cattle. Sure. Seen horses, seen pigs, seen goats. Cars. Yeah. Cars, equipment, like all sorts of stuff. Never once have I thought, boy, I wonder if there's bees in that fucking place. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention, like, I'm sure there's a bee expert that'd be like, this is how you transport them, bee, them, them bees. Hey, that, this is how you transport them bees. Hey, Doug, how you transport um, them bees tonight? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I put them all in one big pot. I put them in one big pot, throw some flowers in there, and I play them some sweet salsa music. Salsa seems like it might get the hips moving, but it actually kind of puts them in the in the, the buzzing mood that puts them down to sleep. That's what they do. They just like to shuffle a little bit, and it just calms them down. They love them salsa. I also like this line here. First responders didn't realize the cargo was bees until firefighters <laughs> went down an embankment to check for leaky fluids. They learned the hard way. <laughs> yeah. The guys did get stung on a regular basis. Everyone got stung at least a couple of times. Oh, man. Uh, the temperature in the mid-40s might have kept them from getting rowdy. So God bless them for that. How do you... Um, I just want to know logistically, how do you how do you contain... How do you get 15 million bees back into a... How do you... Like, they're in the wind, man. That door opens up on that truck. They're fucking gone. How are you containing well, here's, 15 here's million the thing. bees? They're pack animals, right? They're a hive. They're a hive mind. So they're going to stick sure. together, you know? Um, and they know they know what they, they know their home. Right. right? And their home is that truck. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know, man. Can you imagine making the call? You're the firefighters. You know, your dad. Yeah. Former firefighter. Right, right. Imagine what he'd do. He's like, there's fucking bees in here. Like, what do you do? Who do we call the bee police? You know, like the FBI. Ooh. You know? You proud? The funky bee investigators, you, you know? No, not at all. I hate myself. Sad. Really sad. It was a Lucci level pun is what that was. I know. It was terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> no, seriously. Like, not, who, do you, at, who do you? I'm going to have a hard time sleeping tonight because of it. So And the bees. Yeah. Yeah. The bees. I don't know who. Yeah. I, if I got this call, this would probably be my last day on the force. I'd be like, you know what? We're done here. Okay. Question. Yeah. Listen, bees. All right. I, I respect bees, you know. I do I, too. When Natalie sees them out, she freaks out. I go, listen, these bees don't give a shit about nope. you right now. They're they're caring kind of about all about these plants. All right. They just want to hang out with these plants and these flowers. I go, unless you fuck with them, they're not gonna mess with you. I go, Do you see me freaking out? I'm not freaking out. Okay. Wasps, different story. There was a wasp in our umbrella in our patio, and I came to play. Came out like with a broom, yeah. and I was like, I'm going to smash this motherfucker. He had a little bit of a nest that was growing. Oh. I swiped that thing away, and he came back, and I was like, we're going to dance. And for five minutes, I tried to wait for him to land on something so <laughs> I could crush just... him. And I was just, I was like sitting there like doing some Jedi moves. And I was just like, come on, motherfucker. I was going hand to hand. Wish... Like, What's going to feel better? Going from left to right or right to left. I don't know, man, but I'm going to smash this guy. It was like right right at lunchtime. I wish we were neighbors. Dance. I wish to God we were neighbors, because I'd have been out there with, with uh, uh, oven mitts, and a, and a yeah. football helmet. And I'd have been like, let's do it, Doug. Yeah. There's just one guy. Like, wasps, they will fuck you up. Yeah. No big, like, no problem. Like, you know, so like bees, like, this would suck. They would probably be pissed off. They'd be concerned. Like, the bees would be like, I don't know what's going on. I have to sting, whatever. Right. That's whatever. What would be filled with that to make it worse? I'm going to give you 
Two guesses and your first one doesn't count. Spiders. Done. <laughs> yeah. What kind of spider though? Doesn't matter, Doug. It doesn't matter. I, I think 15, it does. No, 15 There's... million daddy long legs. I would still be running the other way. There, well, of course, but there's a sliding scale. What if there were 15 million huntsman spiders? You know what I mean? Like better or worse? Do I have a gun on me? <laughs> Not going to do any good. Do, no, no. Do I have a gun on me with at least one bullet? <laughs> Doesn't matter because they're going to steal it from you and then hold you down. What? No. And hold it to your head. <laughs> I don't like that they can do this. They're going to put their, their fucking, they're going to land on your face. They're going to face, covering your face, face hug me. They're going to face hug you. And they'll be like, don't do it, buddy. Don't do it. Come with us. You're our pet now. <laughs> In accordance with the laws, with the Huntsman Spider laws, you now belong to us. It's been ruled like, on oh in our God. in our Supreme in our state's local Supreme Court. Um, yeah, and our, yeah, you're part of our jurisdiction yeah, now, you're, buddy. You're our sandwich. Um, yeah, that would be awful. I, yeah, That'd I don't. Yeah, it doesn't matter what kind of spider. Spider, uh, a 15 million a thing containing 15 million spiders. No, no, no bueno for me. Um, Dude, can you imagine them just like pouring? Oh out of there? God! See, I'm our, like million. I got like yeah, my my hair is standing up. I don't like this. I don't like this. It's like that scene in Harry Potter and the the yep. the yep. the evil spiders in the forest. Yep. You know, they all come right. You hear their little legs. They're like, oh, but it's like 15 million of them. Like, Bleh! I, I seriously, I'm like, I feel like. Yeah. I'm getting nervous. I'm legitimately getting physically anxious sitting in this office because I'm like, oh, just thinking about like, that, like that, that door like cracks open and there's that half a second pause where nothing happens. And then all of a sudden it's just this dark noise. It's this dark wave that comes out with it. Yeah, it's the noise. You can't replicate it, but you know what you, the noise is. I know is. what the noise is. Yeah. yeah, it's just. You know what the noise is. Yeah, it's just. Uh, it's just. <laughs> yeah. As you, as you lose your mind, you laugh like that in slow motion right. as you just go and. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, that'd be I, awful. Wasps would be say, terrible. What about you? Yeah, what would yours be? Wasps would be just like, good God, we were never going to get. We are going to get stung so many times. <laughs> 15 million Marjorie so Taylor Greens. Yeah, oof, that'd be bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, 15 million Great Whites. That'd be bad. I think that'd be bad for a multitude of reasons. <laughs> Right. Just the uh, like, what's the container that we have that can house 15 million of those? That's what I'm talking about, man. Like, that's what I'm talking what, about. Where are we? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, <laughs> that's a bad deal. A bad deal. Uh, what else? What else would be Do really 15 bad? million, how uh, many great whites equal one megalodon? Is it 100 great whites for one? So, how many megalodons are we talking about? <laughs> yeah. That's how, that's how you got to calculate. How many megalodons? <laughs> Oof. Yeah. That's really bad. You know. What are those little, like, uh, what do you call them? The, the, <clears throat> They live in like garden par- apartments. They pop out. Oh, the, like the, the, the garden centipedes or the house centipedes. centipedes. Yeah. Yeah. That would suck. Those things Those are be fun. freaky as shit. Yeah. Cicadas wouldn't be too bad because there's big dumb animals. I mean, you, you know, essentially have 15 million cicadas <laughs> sitting outside your house right now. So it's not that different yeah. than what your current reality is. No, it'd be loud as fuck in there too. That the, I mean, oh my god, yeah. You open that up, a metal container, you just hear them all echoing, right? And your your ears start <laughs> bleeding immediately. You go deaf immediately as they all scream <laughs> and come out. <laughs> you, yeah, oh, I think spiders would be the worst. Spiders would be the worst. 15 million practical dugs. <sighs> Um, actually, um, actually, um, be, actually, just, um, actually, <laughs> the wave of practical dogs come out. I'm um, actually, I'm actually, I'm actually, it's just a c- boats are depreciating an asset. Boats are depreciating an asset. A cacophony of that. Yeah. Ugh, blah, blah. <laughs> or when the door, let's, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. I'll say, so let us know yeah. what would be your worst nightmare. If 15 million things <laughs> <laughs> fell over a, whatever, a uh, laden truck, what would be your nightmare? Right. What would you see? What comes pouring what out that, that keeps you up at night? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say when the when the truck tips over and the door cracks open for that practical Doug, with the cicadas, it would just be like a cacophony of noise. With practical Doug, it would just... You got the questions, we got the answers. All you do is ask. Practical. 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 Practical, 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 ask practical, duh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if you've never been here before for ask practical, duh. I'm sorry. Little I Doug, practical Doug is a little Doug that lives inside of Big Doug, and he guides Doug through all of life's quagmires, quandaries, and questions. And if you'd like to ask practical Doug a question, you can. On any social media at MindGap Podcast, hashtag Ask Practical Doug, or join the aforementioned Discord where there is a channel, as we talked about earlier, 
just for. It's dedicated to practical Doug questions. And people ask some really good questions. And sometimes if we get good ones on there, we will ask them live on air and Doug will uh, will answer them. Today, however, we're going back to our favorite Am I the Asshole subreddit. And uh, Brave Impressions 767 asks, Doug, am I the asshole for changing my first name? Let's find out. So I... 20 male, never really liked the first name my parents gave me, which was William. I grew up around kids who had names I found way cooler, like Hendrix, Hunter, uh, Orin, Forest, River, Indigo, Ryder, etc. I'm sorry, that's Orion. Nope, it's Orin. Now, uh, not that I was <laughs> not that I was the only kid. Do you notice how that was Time the, out. Real that quick, was the only real one quick. I paused on? <laughs> <laughs> real quick, yeah. all those are white kids. Easily. 100%. Easily all of, the, all of them are white. Those are all white kid names, yeah. man. Anyway, continue. Uh, not that I was uh, the only kid with a normal or classic name, uh, but I would say that those with weird or unusual names way outnumbered us in my school. I was always kind of jealous, I'll be honest. But as I knew, my mom loved my name so much and it would upset her if I tried to change my name. So I never so I never used my nickname at home, which was Jet. J-E-double-T. A part of me always wished I could just go by Jet. Uh, but I decided not to rock the boat or upset my mom. And a year ago, my mom found out about the nickname and she berated me for using it and introducing myself to new people as Jet. She was such a dick about it. And then she told me I should be grateful for her decision to give me a nice classic name because look at how ridiculous my two best friends sound with their first names. And I told her I was jealous of them. Oren and Oren. She said... <laughs> The Orins. She said they're really... Je- We're Oren and Oren. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> She said they're really jealous of me and I was too young to see it. I told her she should try asking my best friends that because I know for a fact they love their names. Mom, you should go I suck should, a dick. I told her she should try asking my butthole. Right. See if, this is oh, the, sorry. That's the only way you can read it. Uh, Mom called me all kinds of names. She told me, but okay, she called you a bunch of names. Did she call you William? Would never allow me to change my name uh, anyway. And she demanded I stop. She demanded I stop going by a jet. It annoyed me so much. And after a few weeks of thinking about the argument we had and looking at the reasons I kept uh, William instead of changing it to Jet, I realized that she didn't deserve that consideration given her reaction to me having a nickname and her thinking she could make the decision for me. I was 19 at this point. So I saved my money and then I petitioned to change my legal first name to Jet. I kept my middle name the same and dropped William completely. (laughs) My last name uh, was uh, danger jet danger? It became official. <laughs> it became official a few weeks ago. Yeah, it doesn't say what he did with his last no. name. I to really to stick it to my mom. Uh, it became official a few weeks ago. My mom was furious when all my new documents came in, and she realized I hadn't lied and I had officially gone through with the name change. She told me I had ruined my life and she, and I had disrespected her by changing the name she gave me, and she felt uh, that she felt suited me best. I told her. Fuck you, mom. I never liked my name. She told me it should have grown on me because William's such a nice, normal name. She's still angry about it, and I expect uh, that, but she really believes uh, I'm in the wrong for going ahead with it. So, practical Doug, am I the asshole? Well, if your name is William William Williams, I can understand how you would want to have some variety in all of that. Right. You know? He doesn't tell us what his middle name was. I'm like, I'm assuming it was William. Billy Williams (laughs) Williamson the (laughs) third. Esquire. Um, I as a parent, because this I is this is I, where I, I wanted to get with you. Like I wanted to do this first, yeah. and then ask the next question. I understand a parent for me, like trying to give my kid a not weird name. Sure, because as cool as it is to call your kid Hendrix <laughs> or, or Oren River <laughs> or Oren or Indigo, like yeah, that's unique. But me personally, that's such a thing you are then instilling in your kid for the rest of their life that they have to try and like, sure. it will always be unique for good, or for, for better or worse. Like someone will always, like I've met plenty of people that are like, hey, like I knew a guy, <laughs> I knew a guy whose name was literally the letter H. What? He went, he goes, my name is H. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? He goes, yes, my name is H. No, my parents weren't high when they named me. The yes, this is my license. Like he he was like a guy that had to go through this thing every single time. He had a patter that was down. Yeah. It was like that guy who played Biff Tannen in uh in Back to the Future, where he would just hand out cards to people as they'd see him and it said, Yes, 
I played Biff Tannen. No, I like he had like a whole thing. He was just like, just, yeah. I do stand up now. No, like he just. So I feel like you are putting your kid like anyone who named their kid Khaleesi. I was like, right, all right, you your kid is named after a fictional character right. from a show that ended very poorly. Like, and you now have to like they have to answer for that forever and ever and ever. Right. Like, I don't think that's fair for a parent to be instilling that onto a child without their consent. Sure. So on one end, her being like, hey, I named you William. All right. You can go by Bill. You can go by Will. You can go by Willie, Billy, whatever you want. It's totally cool. At the same time, her kid's 19. He, now he's 20. He wants to change his fucking name. He wants to change his fucking name. Right. Like, it, honestly, yeah, he's allowed to do it. Jet, that's kind of cool. I don't know. I think it's kind of neat. Yeah. Um, whatever. Like, I think he's, you know, I, I, I do get the vibe that... Obviously, this is pretty one-sided. <laughs> sure, I, we do, yeah. I'm getting his perspective is very. I don't know uh, if his mom really did talk to him this way. Then I'm like, yeah. I mean, if you're trying to get people to curry favor, then it's working. Yep. Um, but if, if the general thing is like his mom is like, listen, please don't change your name. Please don't be weird because you're going to regret it. Right. I think there is some honesty there with the parent. It's like, don't don't go too crazy with it. But at the end of the day, it's his choice. He's not right. an asshole. For changing his name. He's totally legally allowed to do it. Right. You know, like, and his mom can't do anything about it. And if he truly wants that to be his name, fucking good. He own it. Like, enjoy it. Yeah. Like, if Natalie ends up being like, I hate my name and I want to change it, I'll be like, okay. So that was gonna, that was going to be lead my next question. Like, how would you feel if your child came to you and said, I'm going to change my name? Like, what I mean, it, if like, she's 19 years old, yeah. I'll be like, listen, I'm going to give you my practical Doug speech if you're willing to listen to listen, it. Listen, go back and listen to episode 447. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just the ask practical Doug part. Yeah. The rest of it, you know, you don't need to listen to the first part where I talk about how you got diarrhea for the first time. Um, but well, now you've tainted uh, this part. Oh, shit. Now we talked about taints, too. My bad. Um, no, I, I mean, it's just, I mean, if she's like, I want to be called Slagathor, I'd be like, all right, here's why I wouldn't recommend that. Okay. There's, there's some downsides yeah. to be calling Slagathor um, or whatever. I just be like, listen, I, I, I do not have any control over what you do. Sure. If you're going to go through the whole effort to change your name legally, then you are allowed to do that. I can't change that. Right. Just, I will give you my thoughts if you want to hear them. And if not, I can't do anything about that. Right. And I'll be like, hey, everybody, this is my daughter, Slagathor. <laughs> Slagath I will honor whatever you want me to call you because I'm not going to be that petty. How would that I'm not feel to you, you as a parent, though? Like, would you. If she called herself Slagathor? Let's go with that specifically, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of a name that I would just absolutely just. But like Fucking just changing cheats, her name, you know? like would that like is like you obviously would support her regardless. Like I we, yeah. like that goes with that saying. But like, would there be a little nugget inside of you that you're just like, oh man, like she doesn't like the name I gave her. Like would, would there be uh, any, it'd be tough any because like we have so many bit? nicknames, yeah, you know, yeah. car like Nat Nat and things like that. Yeah. And so like I'd have to break those habits, sure, of, yeah, like, calling her those things and whatnot. But at the end of the day, I'm like, I'll call you whatever you want yeah. me to call you. I don't give a shit. Like. Could, Natalie doesn't have some profound meaning. Sure. You know, right, right, right. I named you after my great, great grandmother who I promise didn't own slaves. <laughs> um, you know, like I'm not going to, you know, we don't, we just, we picked a name, you know, right. that didn't gross us out or didn't have some sort of connection to someone we hated in our lives, which by the way, it's really hard to do. I can imagine you yeah. a child and you're like, you're like, what about this? You're like, oh no, I knew a real bitch with that name or oh no this reminds me of this person it is a nightmare i can Sometimes imagine yeah. figure that out and you're like but it sounds so good especially it's with like, as many no. enemies as you have oh too many far too many yeah. so i'll say this brave impression 767 i don't think you're an asshole for wanting to change your name and you have every right to do so and I, if your mom doesn't like it then tough she doesn't have any control over right. that and she should be glad that you even told her that you're changing your name as far as i'm concerned you know yeah what do you think I, I I'm in full agreement. Like again, the the way that it was written, there's some lines and language in there that I'm like, mm, this is coming. This comes across as someone who is still relatively immature. So I don't know. It's if coming in hot. I don't know, know if we're getting the full story here, but if we are, I don't I don't see any. You know, I, well either way, it, it's your it's your life. You can do whatever you want with it. Like yeah. I understand that your mom might have reservations and ask you, you know, preferences for you to not do it, and that's her right to have 
an opinion that way, but she can't stop you, you know, and to yeah. have a, a, a knockdown drag out fight about it, I think is a little overkill. So yeah, I would say yeah. not the asshole. Um, all I would say is just try to have a conversation with her more so than yeah. like, I'm doing this, go fuck yourself, you know? Yeah. It's a weird hill for her to die on. It too. is. It is. Yeah. To be like, I will never refer to you as jet. I'm like, well, he legally changed his name to that. Just call him that. Right. You know? So here's the thing. Because you know what this sounds like to me? <clears throat> sounds like a boomer parent to me. It does. 100%. Like a boomer parent to me who has lost control, hates the fact that they don't have control, and they're they're being like, I don't get to make this decision, So and they're rebelling against me, and they have a hard time dealing with it. I would so. say to Jet, stop calling your mom mom and start calling her Slagathor. Yeah. Be like, okay, Slagathor. By the way, I changed your name too. The minute that you start calling me license. Jet, I'll go back to mom. Yeah. That's our deal. <laughs> It is decided. <laughs> that's a that's a promise. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right, Justin, what do you got to recommend this week? So I'm going to recommend uh, a 24 film for you, Dougie. Uh, the Iron Claw. <clears throat> um, it is with Zac Efron and Jeremy Allen White and other people. Uh, it is it's it's a wonderfully done film, as most a 24 films are. Uh, it is horrifically tragic. And just you're just like, man, I heard it's depressing. This family has gone through some shit, <laughs> but uh, fascinating nonetheless. So I, I would say it's a it's a it's a cool film. Uh, definitely check it out. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where it is streaming right now. It's on Max. So if you want to check it out, you can. Um, yeah. Like I said, it's it's uh, it's based on, a, on an actual family's uh, legends of of a uh, uh, kind of one of the royal families of wrestling. The whole generations have been in wrestling. Um, and it's it's an interesting glimpse into that world, the pressures that come with that world, the family pressures, the society, pre- like just what goes into that. Um, but don't, don't be prepared to walk out of that being like, cool. Like make sure it's a sunny day and then go for a walk. Call your parents. Just like I them, asked, does, does the dog die? I'll say this. The dog doesn't die. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Well, that's okay, yeah. then. I can handle that. Uh, that's a, then, then, then I'll be walking out of the big awesome. Awesome. Uh, uh, Doug, what do you got? Uh, I'm going to recommend, uh, at this point, I guess you call it a classic film, a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I rewatched it a few weeks back, and I was just like, this is such a fun movie. I need to watch it's I've weird. never seen it. It's based on a book. I don't know. Some people I'm sure that read the book probably found the film, you know, just, you know, diabolical or whatever. But it's got um, Zoe Deschanel. It's got Mo Steff. It's got, um, God damn it, the guy who played uh, Bilbo in the Hobbit movies. Martin Freeman. Um, yes. Martin Freeman. Yeah. Um, just delightful. It's got uh, Sam Rockwell. It's got an all-star cast. Um, I'm just looking at it here. Yeah. yeah like Bill Nye, it is just, Alan Rickman. It is just, Warwick Davis, yeah, it's Helen Mirren, very weird. John Malkovich, Stephen Fry, fucking A, Thomas Lennon. Everyone's in this fucking movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just really, it's just a weird, fun film. Yeah. And I find it very, very enjoyable. I tried to get Natalie to watch it, but she also tapped out. It's another one of those. I was like, ah, that's, that's fine. I listen, it gets <clears> goofy, <throat> but I don't know if you really understand what's going on. So yeah. it's just, it's really fun. So, and from that movie beca- comes Seth's nickname. Slutty Bart That's right. Because that's the character that's in that movie. So, yeah. Go check that Very out. Cool. Don't know where it is. Don't care because I own it. So go fucking buy it. Uh, you can watch it right uh, now for three seventy nine on Prime Video. There you go. Woo, 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 woo. Uh, gang, thanks so much for hanging out with us. We appreciate you, as always, for listening. And uh, you know what? Will you fucking engage with our comments? With comments. Engage with our content. Just kidding. Follow us. YouTube.com slash Podcast. Like and subscribe. Uh, drop a comment on any of the questions we asked you or whatever you think about this episode. If you want to double down and be like, yeah, he does look like Sid from Ice Age. It's cool. Fine. It's all good. Check the link in the description to uh, links to our Discord, uh, links to uh, our Redbubble, our merch, and then also our Patreon. And be sure to check us out on all of our social media at MindGap Podcast and check out Justin as well. On Instagram, it's at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. While you're in the online realm, any platform where you can find podcasts, you can find us. So do the things that Doug just said. Subscribe, share, review, rate, all those things. Big one is sharing. Please let people know we exist. And then uh, 2eastaith.com, 2eastaith on uh, all social medias, loveandimprovfilm.com, loveandimprovfilm on Instagram. 
Good job, Justin. Thank you, Doug. Went, they went right through that with no stumbling. I'm very proud of you. Uh, Justin, I want to say thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners, viewers, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.